Welcome back. Uh, well, to shed more light on uh, President Abdel Fattah Sisi's uh, inauguration uh, of uh, the uh, uh, today uh, of uh, the uh, uh, government uh, data and the cloud computer uh, center, we have the pleasure to have with us over the phone our dear guest, uh, Dr. Nivin Makram Labi, Professor of Artificial Intelligence. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, dear. Well, uh, Dr. Labib, how did you see uh, the importance of the inauguration uh, by President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi and the timing of this inauguration for the government data and the cloud computer center? Actually, I believe that the timing is quite perfect because already Egypt is taking the lead in Africa and in North Africa. And on the other hand, Egypt is focusing nowadays on the use of artificial intelligence to provide better decision making and that's what we need especially with the economic crisis that is going worldwide so in order to be able to provide the decision takers with proper insights and patterns and to help them solve the or deal at least with the current challenges we need to make use of the artificial intelligence and hence we need to have data so in order to be able to have data and to save data We've got to use some facilities such as the cloud computing concept and we've got to make use of the big data analytics. So again, I believe that timing is perfect. So um, um, uh, by saying that Egypt uh, is uh, the access uh, for uh, 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 all the data, uh, uh, access for transforming the data between East and West, uh, which is the word by President Sisi uh, today, how did you uh, read this uh, statement? Uh, again, uh, our president was focusing on the importance of data because actually we have a wealth of data. But in order to benefit out of it, uh, we've got to implement to make better use of the techniques of the emerging technologies. That's why we had to focus on how we're going to collect, how we're going to save, and how we're going to disseminate this data. We're talking about govern government data, of course. So as, again, to be able to provide what we call the data-driven decision-making, and that's what uh, is usually uh, the focus of the government and of our president. Yes, uh, so uh, Dr. Labib, uh, um, uh, we'd like to shed more light on the services uh, uh, that the data center is uh, providing, uh, 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 which uh, has been opened uh, today, and the cloud uh, uh, computer center. Okay, maybe we should first of all explain to our dear audience what's meant by cloud computing. Because yes. some people fear that with cloud computing, we will have our data insecure. Mm. Whereas cloud computing actually refers to the use of hosted services. So here we're talking about data storage servers, about databases, about networks, and about software that is provided over the Internet. It's as if you're leasing some services or you're making use of some services in another place. So um, by applying and by making use of cloud computing, we have our data stored on physical servers, which are maintained by a cloud service provider. So we have different providers, different IT companies that are uh, taking care of our data in terms of storage and in terms of providing these data, actually using some access privileges. So here we have our computer system resources available on demand without uh, having direct management by the user in cloud computing. So that's the term of cloud computing. I hope it's made easier for the audience. As for the big data, uh, we're referring to extremely large and diverse collections of data. But it's not only that, it's not only huge amounts of data, but we're talking also about structured, unstructured, and semi-structured data. These are uh, the classification of data in our IT dragon. And these data continues to grow ex exponentially over time. That's yes. why it needs a special handling in order to be able to apply some analytics. And by the way, analytics is different than analysis. We're talking about deep analysis using intelligent techniques and to get some insights out of it so as to provide it to, again, the policy makers and the decision takers. Yes. Yes. So uh, the role uh, uh, in uh, providing uh, 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 the uh, optimal use of the artificial intelligence in the government institu institutions, what is uh, uh, its role? Um, it has a role in each and every domain. 
So, for example, if you're talking about healthcare, let's take it for example. So you'll have, for example, uh, making use of artificial intelligence in the early detection of some diseases, in uh, kind of prediction of um, what will happen next when we provide some treatment to the patients, in providing uh, what we call the personalized medicine, so as to provide uh, a personalized treatment and handling of each case, we're talking about each patient, that's uh, talking about healthcare. If we talk about education, then we're talking again about um, providing better and enhanced and personalized educational services that will fit each and every learner, um, providing better services for special needs because with artificial intelligence, uh, we have the curriculum or the syllabus or let's say the course content to make it in a simple uh, form. We have it provided in uh, different delivery modes so as to suit the learner's needs and capabilities. So yes. if we are to apply artificial intelligence, then benefitly our community will uh, benefit out of it, whether we're talking about industry, about healthcare, about education, about dealing with climate change, all of the challenges that we're encountering yes. nowadays. Yes. I thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you for your valuable information, Dr. Naveen Makram Rabib, Professor of Artificial Intelligence. Uh, thank you very much for joining us over the phone. Ladies and gentlemen, a short break and I'm going to be back with you.